If I'm not afraid of linemen barreling after me, I shouldn't be afraid of one night with a guy who likes dirty jokes and arrives on time. I lean in, wrap an arm around him, and press a kiss to his cheek. Thanks for coming. When I pull away, Hunter's sporting that cheeky, confident grin he wore the day I met him. I hope you can thank me for that later. Maybe Jason was right. It'd be good to be happy. I feel better than I have in ages, like I've drunk some of the antidote to the last few years of heartache. Fun. Just fun. And I sure hope that thanks will be mutual, I add. Hunter makes a show of looking at his watch. I'm sure it will be. In about two hours. By my estimate, that's when we should be at the hotel room. He says. Hunter's exactly what I need. No strings. All in. I'm going to seriously reward this man. I inch closer, dipping my head to whisper in his ear. The second the door closes to the suite, I'm going to push you up against the wall and get my hands and mouth all over you. I step back so I can take in his reaction. Quickened breath, darkened eyes. Nice. Have I mentioned I'm really glad I got the last seat on this flight? Well, we are covering you now. It's part of the full media package on you, I say, and he laughs. Then I add, so I looked you up. That's not the whole truth. I looked Nate up the second I left his home last summer, after our fantastic afternoon. I looked him up again yesterday, along with the other athletes, as I travelled to San Francisco. You're 29. Does it bother you that I'm 24? The question comes out full of tension. If he's bothered by this small age difference, will he be bothered by the experience gap? Nate moves closer, bumping his shoulder to mine. Shoot. No, sorry. Didn't mean to make it sound that way. But I played a rough game last night. I always feel old the day after a game. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Well, if it's any consolation, you looked super sexy, all sweaty and banged up. When I'm two feet away, Hunter raises his face. Oh, hi. It's like I'm in high school again, walking into the library, searching for the cute nerd who ran the video game club so I could ask him out. I brought you this, I say, thrusting the ceramic container of nuts at him. Wow, that's so smooth. Hello, peasant and coach. Here are my first class leftovers for you. Can I not behave like a dick today? But Hunter's lips twitch mischievously. I was hoping for some warm nuts. He takes the dish, plucks out a cashew, and holds it up for inspection. Cashews or macadamia nuts? Which one do you prefer? Walnuts, I say with a smile. He fishes around and hands a nut to me. Hunter, I hate to break it to you. That's a pecan, I say. Ah, but I bet you like them too. More than pie. He says, like he's got a secret. I do like pecans, but I especially dig that he remembered my likes and dislikes from the day we met. Only, I didn't come back here to flirt. I came here because I had something to say. The seat next to him is empty. Maybe his seatmate is in the bathroom. I can make this fast. The hum of the plane gives me some white noise for privacy. Listen, I begin. He tilts his head attentive, but his eyes are wary. I push on. I had a really great time last night, and it's been a while since I've had a great time, so I just wanted to say thank you. I had a great time too, he says. Then his gaze strays to the seat next to him. Ah, hell, I can get a massage in London. I gestured to the middle seat. Do you want company? It's nearly two hours later when we finally reach our hotel. We cut across the lobby to the elevators, racing to be alone. Once we're inside and the doors close, Nate crowds me against the wall. That dinner drove me wild, he says, then ravages my mouth. When he lets go, he's staring at me like I'm his second meal.